good evening. My name is Vaughan Smith. I'm the founder of the Frontline Club, and I'd like to welcome you all here uh, tonight to what promises to be um, a pretty uh, exciting event. Colleen Crafty, deputy, former Deputy Assistant Under Secretary of State for Public Affairs, now a professor at Pepperdine University, and Sir Richard Dalton, an eminent Arabist, distinguished uh, uh, diplomat with a law career in the Middle East and, and in the latter part of the career, Iran, where you were the investor from 2003 to 2000. We've been under siege and attacks on the website and uh, <coughs> public attacks. Yes, and we have, uh, to start with Julia, many years uh, focused on the basis of the material that we have uh, on the website. Uh, we have got very eager response, so, uh, and, uh, and uh, even some of the investors uh, uh, even calls for uh, assassination of, of uh, Julian Assange. But uh, this was to be expected. We expected a, uh, a change over the last three days as we have uh, uh, been publishing more and more stories because the uh, stories are of utmost importance. And the story. I mean, the, the diplomatic uh, uh, cables and uh, have you seen any bombshells? I think we're already starting to see that this is an incredibly significant trove of material. Um, so far, based on just around 400 of 251,000 cables, we've seen you know, huge stories on North Korea, on, um, on Iran, and its links and relations with its neighbors. It's given us a huge insight to how the world is actually operating right now in some of the countries that are everywhere. And I think it's interesting, actually, that if foreign policy, if uh, diplomacy were the only stories within this material would be the tittle-tattle, would be the Prince Andrew material, would be rude comments one politician makes about another. Perhaps for the US to say it's an accountable democracy, um, it should actually behave in such a way. You can only make an informed vote. Likely to damage America's foreign policy goals, such as, for example, the prevention of the proliferation of nuclear weapons? Actually, just the contrary. Some of the new stories coming out are very positive about the role of U.S. diplomacy, that actually it shows that diplomats are seeking um, peaceful outcomes for countries, trying to work with allies. And so, my ask journalists, why don't you just reveal all of your sources? And there's a reason why you don't. And for diplomat country. So we want diplomats to have open and honest assessment of their post and to communicate that back to the maybe political activists, journalists. Are you really going to want to talk to a diplomat from any country when they know that this will be Security Council, Pentagon, State Department? And uh, that also perhaps has, uh, well, it does have repercussions for those with. Um, also, in in general, what will be the repercussions for diplomacy in the future of this, this sort of mass release of what should be kept confidential? The facts of power are the same after the release of this material as they were before. Countries' national interests are the same. The complexity and the difficulty of moving forward, whether on climate change or on peace in the Middle East, remains exactly some foreign leaders try and get their messages through direct to the recipient rather than going through an intermediary matters will go back to we want our governments to be able to think clearly and to be able to act responsibly the question of failure of accountability and the failure of reporting it was therefore to my mind exiling israeli gcc Iranian, European positions on the Iranian nuclear dispute. The function of producing information for the public is partly a function of the success of journalists, and they've got to do better at ferreting out what they need, and partly their act, because if there are more Guantanamos, if there are more calls for the assassination of this person or that person, 
if there are more dodgy, so I hope politicians will clean up their relations with their public servants in this matter of there's been uh, no payment for uh, this material. Uh, and uh, well, your first question uh, is the junior uh, group of our people are, are uh, yeah, undisclosed location. Uh, uh, Tim Castle from uh, Reuters, a question again for the authorities appealing to other companies not to host website, wonder what effect this will have. Well, I don't have the latest on that, actually. Usually, we have, we have uh, ways and means to, to bypass uh, any, any, any closure of service. Sorry, Mark Stone from, from Sky News. Could you just expa expand on, on what my colleague from Reuters asked? Of? Did Amazon or does Amazon have affect what you were able to do? Do you, do you, do you want to take a look? Um, yes. Um, Amazon, as well as selling books and so on, they have a service which sells access at short term to if the house was tracked down by a few papers. Um, the WikiLeaks um, public site um, made use of the, of some Amazon's a story that's clearly of, in, of huge public interest, um, as is evidenced by five. It will be the, the fact that. Uh the U.S. has been attempting to get Banky Moon's credit card numbers. Um, and there's been a basic uh, breach of the most basic uh, duty towards towards the United Nations that you're hosting on American soil, uh, impossible breach of, the, of, of various UN treaties. So isn't it really the case that what is revealed is that the United States government is actually acting like a bunch of hackers from the 1980s and uh, just discarding illegal uh, information? clinicians in their country, and the stories of trying to find ways of preventing nuclear proliferation, so I... Diplomatic staff to, do, to undertake espionage. I well, mean, that really isn't that undermining yeah. the basis I mean, of I think that, that is a specific... The truth, and also um, fighting corruption and injustice, and many people might say that that is a good story to pick up on, but then why take all of these cables? I mean, if the real point is justice and truth and corruption, there was not a specific malfeasance. This was just collecting all sorts of private, confidential cables and dumping it. I think it's and worth sometimes noticing the it's material been... was passed to WikiLeaks by a source in the same way that journalists um, across the world often receive large amounts of source information. In the UK, if, if, the if Telegraph received large under, amounts understand, of information. I understand, but your goal is supposed to be fighting corruption and for the truth. And there was no malfeasance. This is not the Pentagon Papers. And uh, it has repercussions. We have a um, source in China saying that uh, China actually maybe will welcome reunification with potential that this could be setting back a uh, movement of reunification is, is despicable. But you're talking about potential here. It's very speculative. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe Reunification not. might be... Uh, uh, Let's hope so. It is that will be, if it's going to jeopardize moving that, forward, that, no, because that is not. Another thing, if I may, just to follow up, because you were talking about the informants, uh, uh, journalists, and the uh, topic you heard before is we are putting uh, people in danger, uh, and that was part of your argument. Uh, we have had a few hundred documents out there that would have been very well scrutinized. Uh, Four names of the uh, people that could possibly be harmed if, if, if their identity was revealed. And they have been impacted. We have acted in a responsible manner uh, and will continue to do so. We had the same uh, argument actually when we uh, published the Iraq War from uh, the Pentagon. We were putting 300 lives at risk of the people that were identified, but there was not a single name in there. So, I mean, we are acting no. responsibly. Richard, do you want to have a word? Just to say that the I believe the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. should have sent that cable back to the State Department. He should certainly not have asked his diplomats to act upon it. And secondly, of course, in a way of the information entrusted to it, whether by its own servants or by foreigners, including the government I used to serve. Uh, so maybe any see, and to how we ensure that our governments don't do what they've done in the Middle East in the way they've done it in the last few years, 
vile organization. Once WikiLeaks got that material, once it had been extracted, stolen, then either they or somebody else would have published it. Uh, James, I, I, the, a US ambassador says that the reason that war crime prosecutions or accountability is going so slowly with Sri Lanka and the Tamil Tigers is because the co responsibility for the alleged war crimes, such as if transparency is advancing perhaps what people would wish for the UK or the US's foreign policy goals to be. You hear that? No, no. I mean, the, the, uh, the, you were talking about schedule, and, and I think that in general, I can, I can reveal that we, we will in, in probably uh, in, in, in bigger batches uh, 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 put uh, these, into these documents. Uh, uh, we will uh, work with uh, more and more media organizations uh, on a regional basis as well. And uh, I think we are going to see this, yes, uh, into the new year. Kristen, um, Julian Assange, in an interview two days ago with Forbes, said that the, you, the WikiLeaks is going to be moving on to corporate, um, corporate world next, and that he was, and I think, direct quote, is going to turn a major bank inside out. I was wondering if you could tell us any more about that. Uh, I'm not going to say, tell you at this moment uh, what exactly is going to be. We usually don't comment on the quality of the bank or, or British bank or where it's based. Hi, former CBS colleague. Hello, I'm Liz Palmer from CBS. Um, I'd like to address you directly, James and Christian. Um, do you believe that diplomats have a right to have? Why are you any better arbiters than democratically elected governments? I, th I think to tackle the second question, um, probably over a hundred journalists working for it across six media partners, including the most established <coughs> newspapers in the world. I, you know, the Pentagon Papers were released through the press. They um, have a specific policy objective, and you don't. Quite. Yeah. Yeah. Within domestic U US politics, is difficult. Um, there's an acceptance that things should be incredibly open, by and large, should be. If any US citizen, if anyone wants to enter or leave the US, the government has to see them naked. I mean, does it transparency run both? Any more reporting press questions? Secret, but it's, sorry, Sunday Times. Sunday Times. Um, the cable, the, there's a lot of material on the cables which is secret, but which is actually, when you look through it, dull, and all it does is embarrass the people who are involved. Um, there doesn't seem to be a strong public interest case for publishing a lot of what was there. There's a definitely a public interest case for publishing some of it. Um, should WikiLeaks have perhaps exercised greater judgment? Is that true? Uh, the, the question is, is, uh, is uh, in my mind, is, is uh, pretty much what James was saying earlier. Why isn't this uh, the same question pointed at the, uh, the, uh, the media? That, yeah. uh, I, would, I would ask that as well. I, I think one point worth making is that there's a bit more about um, Alan Duncan's friendship with William Hague and uh, David Cameron. Um, they obviously think... Other than the principle of privacy, but is, is there anything seriously damaging in what's come out so far in reality? I, I am mostly focused on the damaging uh, aspect of the private communications, and I think that's what I, I go back to. You know, the international and that they should be uh, privileged communications and the diplomat bag and diplomat markings. And so, you know, the international community made the determination of how important it is for diplomats to be able to communicate privately. And so for you know, a group to kind of say that's not the way business should be done it goes against how the international community made the determination. And um, I think we need, I, I, I don't know what can be done about it. Obviously, security measures and the end of intragovernmental sharing of information. And of course, there'll be stepped up uh, security <coughs> aspects. And uh, so I don't know what else can be done. But I do think that it will have um, 
it will have a chilling effect, and I don't think that's a good thing, because I, I think we want open communications. And I'll also just mention, my role at the State Department was public diplomacy. So there was a whole aspect of the State Department that was trying every which way possible to make sure that you have access to journalists. We set up a hub in Brussels to make sure we had real-time zone to get diplomats media training so they weren't afraid to go out and do media. We set up a blog, you know, the dip note blog on the State Department government side. I was the first senior government official on Twitter and took a lot of abuse for it and got embassies having Facebook sites. So here we are doing everything we can for transparency and openness and having <coughs> junior foreign service officers being able, you know, writing about what it's like to be a diplomat. And uh, so you know, we, we were doing everything we could to try and uh, have cra creative ways of being open. And uh, so this is difficult. <laughs> they're, they're secrets because they are in an environment where there are hostile parties trying to prevent things happening which would be in the interests of the citizens of their countries. I'm to carry out your mandate as a representative of your country unless you can protect your communications, or else you might as well pack up a policy. You might get a US cabinet member responding to a question from a journalist about what he said in that meeting. You do not get the raw material. So that analogy with US domestic affairs is bogus. Hi. Intense pressure that WikiLeaks and its staff were under. Um, can you tell me what you think Julian Assange has to fear from the U.S. government? I mean, is he afraid that if he discloses his association, uh, his sorry, his location, he's going to be assassinated or something like that? Serious question. A lot of talk about uh, legal action being uh, taken against WikiLeaks and Julian. Uh, we have uh, heard, uh, of course. Uh, claims that uh, we've done something illegal and, and that he has done something illegal, uh, that we are criminal. And what do you have to fear from the law by disclosing his location? Well, when you have people uh, uh, calling for, uh, Which for example, on, uh, on, on his own Does an international arrest warrant play into that, though? I mean, isn't that more of a concern if there's an outstanding arrest warrant? This arrest warrant, there was, uh, I think, a, a appeal uh, or it is Swedish I mean, even before assassination, he's got something that he's really got to face. So the introduction process, having a manner in a very uh, careful and responsible manner, uh, operating... Uh, uh, a question about Bradley Manning, who uh, it's widely reported has been a source for a lot of the inf all the information that you've got. Have you spared a thought for him? He's um, uh, locked up. Um, I mean, Julian Assange famously said that the American government had blood in its hand. Is there a danger here that you could end up? The organization is, uh, is to uh, keep uh, to ever advocate with for whistleblowers to hand the information on. Uh, information, but I believe even as an alleged source, the WikiLeaks Twitter feed has often uh, tried to encourage people to support Bradley Manning's defense fund. At the minute, I believe he's already incurred 130,000 in defense costs. Uh, contributions so far have reached 90,000. So I'll think to Christian. One thing worries me about the unmediated release of private communication, and it's not the danger to the people who are communicating, it's the danger to public understanding. During the course of the last three or four days with the reports of the press, what we've had on the one hand is it's very serious issues, serious issues particularly concerning Iran and particularly concerning North and South Korea and their relationship with China. And we've had a lot of diplomatic tittle-tattle and real tittle-tattle. Those of us who have friends who are diplomats know this kind of material tittle-tattle talk. And what worries me is that the press has a tendency to pick up on the tittle-tattle. And I notice that ever since the first release at the beginning of the week, much less has been said about the serious implications of some of the material. So I'd like, like to ask Christian, do you think it's a good idea to put out 250,000 communications altogether unmediated because actually it drowns that which is serious in that which is silly? Um, I'm sure there'll be much more. Um, I'm sure there'll be much more. Of course there's going to be other things put in there. The media, obviously, the British media put in things about the royals, and 
the British public wanted to read about them. It's, um, it's the same as any kind of story. I don't see how letting the people, the academics, the other people who want to see a wider volume of that, I, I don't quite understand the premise. I mean, I don't know. An example that would occur to me would be thinking back to, say, 2002, 2003, the contacts that the American State Department and, um, and CIA had with Iraqi exiles in the USA, uh, and the kind of information that they were <coughs> giving the American government that led to the decision to go to war. At that time, of course, we will recall that the American media were publishing what these exiles were saying. Perhaps if material had been published or leaked about these contacts and about what these uh, Talibis and the other uh, the Shiite groups um, at the time were doing and their relations with government, perhaps if they had been, uh, become public, it might have become politically more difficult for President Bush to launch the war. Through China, and Obama finds this out and is asking Beijing to stop the transfer, and Beijing declined. Well, I think that shows a good role of diplomats trying to prevent that and stop that. And I think it's also good for the world to recognize, you know, China, China refused and allowed these medium-range missiles to go from North Korea to Iran. What sort of a responsible uh, future or current superpower is that for uh, China to, to take? So there'll be many examples of where these uh, stories will have interesting roles to play. I go back to the the basics, and Sir, Sir Richard is a member of Chatham House, you know, the Chatham House rule, what if we just said you know, anyone will violate the Chatham House rule, we'll have really difficult uh, meetings from then on at the Royal Institute for International Affairs if everyone knows that you know, it's fair game, well, even though we know about the Chatham House rule, that you don't reveal the, the name of the source, even though you can describe the, the, the context, um, it, will, it will have repercussions. Satisfied with the level of disclosure, then they must do something about it through their democracy. Uh, for example, uh, your MPs could send back to the Foreign Office the written answers to parliamentary questions which they get, which are three sentences long, and say, I want something better than this. In other words, scrutiny can be much better done in the United Kingdom. And if, you're, if you and your campaign believe that the gap that's opened up between what should have been revealed by government and what has been in specific instances, then use it to enlarge, through legislation, the area of disclosure through our, our, our freedom of information uh, legislation. So yes, I hope something good comes out of it, including the point I was making earlier about the covenant between civil servants and governments. Just like that, uh, Guardian, the Lord Speaker, uh, the uh, New York Times, uh, what kind of uh, release pattern was, was there, so it was something that we decided together. Uh, what you're doing is, is some sort of a non-competitive agreement that there'll be a certain date we'll talk about Iran, another date we'll... I mean, how do you, how do you justify this? Well, I mean, there are, there are, there are so many stories, there. It's, it's such an important story, there are so many of them. But the press is supposed to be competitive. It's it, day by day. Well, that's a question you should take to the press, basically. Uh, Do you impose this? Sorry? Do you impose this? Uh, Who imposes these? I think everyone agrees to it. I mean, it's... I it's to that. To, you to sit around and, and just talk about it. Yes. To, to, cite, uh, to cite the Telegraph again, since we are doing... Since it's the last UK story that ran over days and days and days, they, they ran the story each day because they had sufficient material <coughs> and there was sufficient public interest that that was there. The other media could have chosen to lead on any other topic, but decided that was the story of greatest public interest and often followed it. On this material, there, there's, five, there's five papers that are deciding for whatever period of time that what they have found in these cables is of such significance that it's going to be their front page and a number of their inside pages for a day. Um, any other paper can look at the cables that are out and find its own stories, or you know.
then follow up on the papers out on the material out there, or choose to cover something else entirely. I mean, I don't think it affects the ecosystem. I think, um, I mean, my view on WikiLeaks choosing to phase the release and the media partners choosing to do that is, of course, you know, this is, I mean, a vast, vast trove of information. It would take, it's 260 million words. It would take uh, someone about 70 years to read it. And that's assuming they didn't take weekends off. Um, Third, uh, of, uh, of Tofu. Uh, it was uh, reported by one fringe website, uh, 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 but gradually it became a common knowledge, and it is, and it was justified as widely reported. So these sort of things take off, and then they get a lot of results. So it's a speculation. There were definitive numbers that there were 2.3 million. Um, what do you think of the idea of WikiLeaks actually? filling a void that's, that, that's being created by a declining number of international journalists and news organizations. Um, because actually, um, I mean, some of the things that came out, I don't, I mean, I don't see them as particularly new because I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I checked this morning that there were journalists already covering China and North Korea um, and Iran and the, the, the weapons and the, you know, being transferred there and also, um, Things like you, know, you go to Israel and you just speak. The, the uh, increased tendency to uh, secrecy in government. If we, uh, and, uh, if we think about the, the Pentagon Papers of the, uh, the uh, early 70s, and uh, what Daniel Ellsberg, who's a great supporter of WikiLeaks, uh, actually a great person, did at that time, you know, walked straight into the office, decided to uh, not to publish it because of uh, government pressure. Um, that might be one example of, of why people see the possibility we can run it. But there is a difference between confirmed knowledge and suspected knowledge so far as the function of secrecy is concerned. And this is a really crucial point. Secrecy exists for a reason. Diplomats are under instructions to use high classifications to a minimal degree, certainly in my country. And the reason is that we have a duty to the public to re report and reveal as much as we possibly can. <coughs> Hence the fact that we have increased the amount that the public <coughs> knows. Contrary to what Chris has just said, the tendency has been to less rather than more secrecy. I'll give you an example of why the function of secrecy would be required. I think everybody would agree that we need to reduce the risk from the potential proliferation of nuclear weapons by Iran. We know that some of the best breakthroughs in international diplomacy over the decades have been done where something has been prepared privately because to reveal it prematurely would bring all kinds of enemies of that on top of you. In the case of Iranian nuclear programs, the enemies of a negotiated deal and a reduction of risk exist in the right wing in the United States and in the right wing, so-called, uh, in Tehran. Yet, there might be a crucial body of men and women, both in the United States and Iran, who want to find a way forward. How do you protect their ideas from being revealed prematurely in such a way as to kill the initiative? Answer, by secrecy. And that's why I say that much of this information at the time it was generated, and consequently now, did not belong in the public domain, because it was about the achievement of an objective that required secrecy. I work for newspapers, we use paper, and we have a lot of staff. Uh, you don't have these paper in this. <coughs> wondering about the funding, the funding of, uh, the funding of WikiLeaks. Uh, what's your monthly budget and who's the main contributors to your organization? Uh, we are, we are uh, funded by um, a central center, but uh, uh, this is uh, uh, uses as, 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 as a, uh, a guide. We don't know the people who are, who are donating, we just have no the broad statistics and it's a uh, interest to the public is nevertheless something that you refuse to publish? And if so, what are your criteria in reaching the decision? Journalistic principles. Uh, I'm Ali Atlasi. Let's assume that what you do is morally right, but as a member of public, I think it's unfair because uh, Although American, uh, U.S. policies are 
may be wrong at some uh, points, but uh, Saddam's government did many things wrong, or Iranian government does many wrong things. And in WikiLeaks website, there is no, uh, as an Iranian, I don't see any way any Iranian agent, for example, or somebody who has documents can publish those documents, or there are a few documents about Iran, secret documents, let's say, but they they are lost in between Scientology documents, so they don't get that publicity as what you get from U.S. I mean, well, we'll be uh, often that will come to Washington and say, "Well, we'll go, well, <coughs> yeah, they don't. Yeah, we know he goes in that direction, or she says that, but they will have also one of those assessing how much uh, emphasis was put on um, on that information back in Washington D.C." If I may, if I may, very frequently said was that this is the view of one soldier in the field. Now this is the view of one ambassador in the field. But the ambassador is a rather seedy role. I mean, is it got to end? Does this is the role of one president in the field? I mean, at what point is this is it incredible? Uh, but but I mean, you have, you when it you comes from the president, it's obviously policy. Yeah. When it comes from the field, people often people are information and you know significant stories of public interest going out to be published, and that's what lots of media organizations did. I think that the captious headline is going to give a pejorative view of what's happening. It's not U.S. policy, and, but that gets lost. It's uh, entailed the release of, of the uh, Patsy attack video uh, which, uh, that you might have seen, which was released in, in April. Um, we look into all the angles of, of that particular story. So it takes time. Well, yes, in the future, I mean, they are going to be releasing. I can promise, and of course, a link to WikiLeaks and published uh, last week. Uh, and, and of course, uh, one of the aspects. Um, it was more the idea that, <laughs> there you go, congratulations. It was more the idea that rather than saying we're going after a truth, we're going after an issue, we're going after something that's a wrong that needs to be righted, and you're going after that story, there it is a just data dump, and the data dump is not being put into a context. So that's the problem. It's just a massive amount of information, and it's just any confidential cable uh, that is that is being uh, put out there. I, mean, I would say there are about 6,000 news stories at last glance on Google about that. So, I mean, how much context does a data dump? Well, again, to my point, where is the malfeasance? Where is the malfeasance that we're trying to correct? It's just, yeah, Prince Andrew, okay. Uh, it's just we're wanting to, we don't like the fact that you have confidential cables and that di diplomats correspond in secret, and therefore we're going to scupper that. And that is, that is a wrong that has to be righted that diplomats speak confidentially. I don't agree with that. Elizabeth Palmer for the last question. Uh, I have a, a question, a follow-up on the finance question. I'd like to know how uh, your donations may have increased or decreased since all the attention that's been focused on you, beginning in April, but perhaps in the last few days especially. And I'd like to know uh, if you can tell us um, what, how, what proportion is coming from the United States? Where, the, where it comes from. Um, well, what about the curve? Is it like this? Or what well, I, 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 <laughs> for, I think actually the best uh, the period of, of, uh, of donation, donation was pre prior to uh, the big releases when uh, we just had to close down for lack of funds. So, uh, uh, it, it has gone in curves, and it has been interrupted uh, also because of uh, uh, our credit card uh, professor decided to terminate the relationship uh, with WikiLeaks. We had to set up a new, new, uh, new uh, uh, way of, of receiving uh, donations through credit cards. And we've had also attack on the, our donation page. Uh, it's a very serious attack. So but generally speaking, when you get a lot of attention with a big leak, do donations increase or decrease? Uh, there is some increase, and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to uh, get back to the breakdown on, on, on that numbers. And I think there's, uh, there's nothing muddled about the uh, uh, financial 
workings or weakenings. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh, it's quite clear that this is a story that's going to run and run and run and for no other reason than this bizarre arrangement reminds me of Pravda, you know, today is Iran, tomorrow is going to be uh, North Korea, Wednesday is going to be Pakistan. Um, and it's also clear, uh, I think that WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks is, is a big part of the, uh, become a big part of the story themselves. And I would like to thank our panelists uh, for uh, answering your barrage of questions.